okay i got another tv one that i can't even lift this thing is literally 100 pounds it's one of the cheaper models the fs 120s are not that good they tend to have geometry issues but it was free so who cares right 2004 so it's the same age as my funai Here's your input selection. Much better than the Toshiba that was had a busted tube. Yeah, there you go. Good news, everyone. This is, by the way, this is not a review of appliances. Look at that. A recommendation of anything. It's Works just, great. This is just off AV. A vlog video. I want to talk a little bit about the These are the front controls, by the way. Right now, that ties into what I'm I need to get a remote still, but um, so it works. It. So I got the Fire TV remote, remote to work with it, too. And so I can adjust the volume and stuff. Before I closed on the house, I went to my local beat box. The sound on this is particularly nice. And I had a budget number in mind, and I just picked, I put a package of appliances together. And Fast forward many months later, that video you just saw was shot in September of this year when I first got this set. And now it's the Christmas video time. I was originally planning a vintage computer video, but unfortunately I am unable to locate the uh, my collection of power adapters for those laptops, so that's probably going to have to wait until I can get a hold of those again. They're in here somewhere. I will find them. Um, but I don't want to tear my closet apart on Christmas Eve, which is when this video is being shot. So, I will show you guys what I have been doing the past couple months when it comes to my audio and video hobbies. So, back in September, as you saw by the video there, I got a hold of this TV. I found this, of all places, on the Facebook Marketplace. That seems to be a pretty hot place to find um, stuff these days. Uh, you, uh, it's a little bit better than Craigslist, I would say for electronics, although you really should look in both if you're going to look for stuff like this locally. Um, so I was in the market for a nice big CRT and I, I was looking on Facebook Marketplace and there was a guy or a gal, it was a family I think, selling uh, two TVs. There was a big 32 inch Panasonic which looked a lot smaller than it what ended up being in real life and then there's this 27-inch uh, Sony Trinitron set. And I forget the model number. It's in the FS120 series. So it was the lower end of the uh, Trinitrons back then in 2004. But it still has an excellent picture, as you saw when I tested it using the Fire TV. I don't have the Fire TV hooked up to it anymore. Now it has a Roku with the composite out hooked up to it instead, which I think is much, much better. And the picture is excellent. Uh, when Grateful42 and I made the video of when we built that computer recently, uh, we ended up watching some anime on this TV. We watched some Cowboy Bebop. And uh, it looked excellent on this TV. It looked really good. And the one thing I can say about this TV that's great is the sound. The sound is excellent. So this is the Trinitron that I ended up picking up for f free of charge because... I've noticed that on marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and whatnot, the bigger, heavier, and more bulky a TV like this is, the more free it is, because <laughs> people just want it out. And you almost have to pay people to take these things away these days, unless you're uh, someone like me who enjoys using older TVs like this. Now, the reason I went for one of these is because... Uh, Older TVs are a lower resolution. This is a standard def TV. And standard def content tends to look better on a standard definition TV set. Uh, your second best option for that is a 720p LCD set, I would say. But if you really want it to look good, you really need to use a 4x3 CRT set or something like that. Because a CRT is soft enough to cover up a lot of the artifacts and noise. Now this Trinitron is big. It is a 100 pound TV and I have it on this like Walmart shelf that has all my video games and consoles and stuff in there. And the limit of this is 100 pounds. 
so I'm right at the limit. <laughs> Living on the edge, man. This TV set is nice and big. It is in good shape. Uh, the one thing I have noticed is it does have the geometry problems people describe. Um, but you only really notice it when you have a widescreen screen image on the TV, because it letterboxes that on a 4x3 set. Uh, when you have a full screen image on it, like when we were watching Cowboy Bebop, no issue at all whatsoever. The nice part is, as you may, as those of you who grew, who grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s like I did, you can open the front and plug in your game consoles. Yeah! Which is pretty cool. And most of the controls you need, including the menu controls, are there. The back of the TV, you saw in the, uh, the other video segment. I did manage to get the remote for it. And that is this big guy here. This remote has all the controls I need. It also lets me turn the uh, enhanced mode on and off, which basically changes the, the geometry to uh, force it either full screen or widescreen. It's called EDTV, Enhanced Definition. I'll have to show you what that looks like uh, in the video here, but it's kind of cool. This is the most significant pickup I've had in a long time. I really had good luck with this. So... I say we turn this TV on and I'll show you what it's all about. As TVs from this era did, it has a nice like ding clunk as it turns on. There you go, there's the Roku background. And this is just composite video. You know, nothing special. It looks great, man. Now, enhanced definition is what you actually need this remote for. So let me see if I can get to the enhanced definition. There's the presets there. Now how do I do this? I gotta remember how to uh, do enhanced definition. I think it's in the menu here, but here's the menu of the TV. Clear Edge V, I don't know what that does. No clue. Neutral color temperature is good. There's your audio. You can have surround sound effects. Like and there's steady sound, which I don't know what that is. That might actually be like a, a, a loudness or like a volume limiter, so that stuff that's too loud doesn't like ruin your ears. There's a lot of effects here. Options. You can turn the speakers off. You can set up the channels, of course. There's parental control password. Here we are. And now we have uh, captions. And here's the 16 by 9 enhanced mode. What that will do is it will force the 4 by 3 image into a 16 by 9 image. And that is very useful for like older DVD players that really didn't have that option, or if you just need to force it like that. And you can see some of the geometry problem when you do that. See how this is kind of curved? That's the geometry problems that uh, these things have. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really affect watching a show, but you, you'll really see it in the menus. And um, when you have a, a, a letterboxed image like this, you'll see it more. So, you know, these aren't the best, but when the TV is free, do you really care at that point? I sure don't. So those are the features of this TV. There's not a whole lot to a CRT set other than the tube, really. But this one has a few extra features that are nice. It's not a widescreen set like I had when I was a kid. We had a big widescreen Panasonic 16x9 uh, CRT TV uh, when I was a kid. But this one is really good. Um, Here's a selection that I have on my Plex server. This is a VHS tape that I recorded literally 15 years ago. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> of uh, a bunch of paranormal stuff that was playing on the Travel Channel back then. And it has some stuff that's harder to... It has some um, shows on there that you really don't see anymore that are kind of hard to find. So I'm glad that I uh, recorded that. And looking at this Plex menu, it kind of shows some of the geometry problems. If you look at the font here on Travel Channel and you just slowly go to the right. You see how it sort of like softens up? Might be a little hard to see like that. And then you look at like this. That magnifying glass is a little bit meh. 
So, you know, the, the, this was a low-end Trinitron. These, these weren't amazing. Um, but as you can see, after 15, 15, 16 years, this thing still works fine. And I'll play, I'll play some of this uh, video file to show you what it looks like. Because this is a good example. It's from a VHS tape, so it's going to be, you know, 240 resolution as VHS was. But TVs like this were made for that, so it should, it'll look fine. And it'll give you... And since this TV's uh, footage is from 2005, it'll give you a good idea of what it would look like to watch something back in those days on this TV, which I think is really cool. Make that very age-appropriate. So, where did I put the remote? Yeah. Alright, here we are playing that file from Plex. As you can see, the camera's sort of picking up on that line that's always in a Trinitron set. But there you go. That is broadcast TV from 2005, recorded from VHS, on a TV like this. And it looks fantastic. Like, because it's VHS, it looks a little soft, as you can see. Probably there's too many more A patterns with the TV here, but... It looks very good, I can assure you. Very smooth motion. Like, earlier when you saw the geometry problems, they just don't really affect watching a show like this, as you can see. It looks fine. There's just nothing wrong with it. And that's generally what I use this TV for, is for watching content like this that just looks way better on a CRT set. And for video games as well, because uh, certain video games just have a better flow on a CRT. Like TurboGrafx-16, for example, has excellent, excellent feel on a TV like this. So if you're playing something like a horizontal or vertical shooter, it's just going to feel better. Uh, the sound on this TV is particularly impressive, too, and once this gets to a commercial, I'm going to uh, give you a good taste of how it sounds. You're quite right in thinking that this is a situation that calls for an absurd British comedy. Drain the pool, get on your board, and wall plant three times. I'll lose the scarf. Oh, Want incredible entertainment experiences in your lap? Get Intel Centrino mobile technology in your laptop. Hi, I'm here downtown to bring you... Ambient CR is now available. Talk to your doctor. If you See, this sound is really good. Today for your seven day and the old commercials are goofy, aren't they? <laughs> Which do you prefer? This one. Parabé, yes, one. This one? Parabé, yes. This one? No, it's two out of three, so pick the other one. But I like the taste of Parabé. Research says two out of three people prefer the food flavor of Captain Morgan's Parabé. There you go, some booze, man. That's just in time for Christmas. Man, I'm from the islands. Drink responsibly. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange has thousands. One carat solitaire is five ninety nine. One bling, 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 bling. Deep flawless and fancy diamonds at low prices by Factory Direct and Save, the jewelry exchange with superstores nationwide. We had a maritime pillaging, but with so many people switching to Capital One, we've had to find new jobs. Christmas is our dignity. For low rates and great rewards, switch to Capital One. Oh, your wallet. I'll make you the list. Next time on In a Chef, Eric has a lot of energy. Do you feel the energy? <laughs> and asks a lot of questions. Do you mind if you have seats? Check with Carlton? We're putting lemongrass in the drink. What is that, mayonnaise and what? You're not allowed to ask any questions. <laughs> I'm the chef. You're the student. Can Marcus direct his eager apprentice to discover his own inner chef? I'm doing it. I'm not like this. Okay, that's good. It's perfect. Inner chef. Tomorrow night at 9, only on Discovery Home Channel. Discovery Home Channel is available on digital cable and satellite. Call your local cable or satellite provider today. It's time to get out of credit card debt. Hi, I'm Todd Cook for 800 Credit Card Debt. Let's say this $10,000 is your credit card debt. And there you go. The sound out of this TV is incredibly good. It's it's really clear. It has good high end. It's got some oomph with the bass too. 
So you really don't need a separate sound system for this TV at all. It sounds great on its own, unlike a lot of CRT sets where they just kind of shove a speaker in the side or in the bottom or something like that, and it just sounds kind of eh. This one, on the other hand, sounds great, looks great, and is great for content like this. Very, very pleased with the performance. So that is the story on the Trinitron set. I use it mostly for this for the standard deaf content and just, you know, to be a to be a TV enthusiast and watch YouTube or whatever on it. And for video games, as you can see. So for those purposes this TV serve is an ex serves this TV serves those purposes very well. Well, that's an old show, Stranded with Cash Peters, remember that? Jeez. Anyway, that's the story on the Trinitron set. It's It's been a beautiful set, and I've really enjoyed using it. So, there you have it. Uh, let's take a look at some other stuff I've been working on. So, you guys remember might remember that uh, video of that Toshiba set I picked up off the side of the road that uh, arced when I turned it on, and it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> uh, I... Basically, I came to the conclusion that the tube went to air after looking at it again on the inside, and I noticed there was that, you know that white spot that was on the end of the CRT, on the neck of the CRT? That was because it went to air. Um, I think V Westlife left a comment that was the most plausible thing ever. They just dropped the TV when throwing it out, and it made the tube go to air. I think that's pretty much exactly what happened. So... Unfortunately, that I would have to replace the picture tube to make that TV work, and that's just not worth it. Not on a TV that new, anyway. So what I've done is I just stripped the chassis. So now I've got some nice spare speakers to work with, some 8-ohm, uh, 10, 10-watt speakers, which are great test speakers, and they appear to be shielded, too, with this big bulb around the magnet. Uh, I've got everything with it. It has the flyback... I've got big resistors like these as parts now. Just a lot of good parts on these TVs. Look at these big fat resistors. Uh, there's a tuner module there. There's a spare flyback if I ever need it. And of course there's a tube socket as well with uh, some components on there too. So this has basically been relegated or moved. Relegated, I don't know what the right word is for that. Um, moved it to the parts bin. And um, the big resistors on this, especially, I think are going to be useful. I've seen those used in audio equipment, too. So that's what happened to the Toshiba set. It didn't go completely to waste. Uh, I stripped the chassis out and threw the rest away. So there you have it. Above that, I managed to get this for uh, a decent price. Uh, this is an ARM Electronics monitor, a uh, BNC and composite monitor. I think it also takes as video. I'm not sure uh, anymore. But um, this was being sold for pretty much nothing on eBay. And I was like, hey, that's worth a shot. And it does work. The thing actually does work. And I'll show, I'll show some footage of it working as I talk here that I took uh, months ago. And, uh, and a few pictures as well. And unfortunately, around, along the bottom of the set, it has some color issues. And I believe that is just a magnetized picture tube. So what I need to do to make this thing work properly is to get a uh, manual degaussing wand or coil and, you know, just uh, do the whole degaussing thing on this particular tube. Because if there's, if there's even degaussing built into this, it's just not strong enough to fix what's um, going on with the TV. And as you can see with the footage, turning it on its side changed the magnetism. So it was a bit interesting there. Uh, but hey, it, it works, and it's got a menu and everything. It works beautifully, the speaker works, it runs. I just need to degauss it, I think, and then I'm set. I can use it as a, uh, as a monitor, which would be great for things like video games and whatever. I still have this RCA set here, which probably needs capacitors at this point, because it acts a little funky and it's a little sensitive to voltage. So, yeah. That's what I. That's sort of stuff that's been on the bench for now. This set, I cannot wait to get working. This thing is great. This is a fun set, but it's really low priority because I have the Panasonic one that works perfectly. It was new old stock, so it might sit on the back burner for a while. But this, I want to get this thing running because this is color, so that'll be really nice. And the connectors on the back are BNC and S video, so you know it, it can take at least decent types of connectors. 
The other thing I managed to get a hold of is a very, very early LaserDisc player. This is a Magnavox um, LaserDisc player from 1980, and it's old enough that it says VLP on it. And I posted this on Twitter, and there was some confusion about VLP, like, like it was a different format. The thing about LaserDisc, you got to understand, is it had like 50 different names before they settled on LaserDisc. It started out as DiscoVision and uh, a few other things, and eventually they settled on LaserDisc, as you can see uh, on the front of this. Laser Video Disc on the front of the Warriors there, which is my test disc, because it's this this disc is from like 81, so it would be age appropriate for this particular player. And unfortunately, it doesn't work. When you plug it in, it, it just whirs and makes a noise. So I'm assuming that there's probably a belt problem in there, and I just haven't had the time to deal with it yet. This control needs lube. Listen to that. Oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It. I got this for free because it doesn't work. So it's kind of one of those, I'm going to try to fix it, but who knows if I'll actually be able to fix it. It'd be really cool if I got this working, though. Then I could watch some of the laser discs I had lying around. Look at that. It's just, it is a sight to behold. These things were built like tanks. There's the laser pickup. And this is why this is going to be such a gamble, because who knows if the laser pickup is even any good still. Um, I don't think the belt is good right now, but the laser pickup, who knows. Maybe that has its own belt too, I don't know. But this is a maybe kind of a repair job. I don't know if I'll get it working, but I can try. And I'm not going to try very hard, just because I don't know if the laser is going to be good. But if this thing, if I ever get this thing working, there will be a video on it for sure. And if I don't get it working, I'll still show the inside just to show, you know, late 70s, early 80s laser disc technology. There you go. Just in case you wanted to see what the bat, how old this thing is, it was made in Belgium, which is different, and it actually just has a built-in RF modulator. Uh, I believe this is composite video here, and this is just regular, you know, left and right stereo audio. But yeah, it uses BNC for composite. So I have the adapter for that. That's cool. So that's how old this thing is. It actually uses an RF modulator. There's your model number. It's the VH8000CH01. So it's a very early LaserDisc player. I don't really know much about these. I don't know how reliable or unreliable they are. It's really hard to tell. There you go. This was from July 1980. So this was the same model that I think they introduced in 1979. So it's effectively the same one from the year before. And getting into this is easy, it's just quarter inch, it looks like. So, eventually I'll take a look at this and see if I can even fathom repairing it. But yeah, that, that's a cool piece of equipment that I got a hold of. The other thing I got a hold of are, is one of these like little cheap televisions that you, they advertise for like camping or RVing or whatever with the car cord. And uh, here's some footage of the one I have working. And here's the little set itself. It is adorable. Look at that. It is so cute. It's not one of the ones that has a built-in radio. So, 
uses just your standard tuning VHF low, VHF high, and UHF tuning. And you can actually charge batteries with this thing. I guess there was a battery pack, or you could uh, put rechargeable batteries in the bottom here. Wait till you see how many batteries this thing takes. You want batteries? We got batteries. <laughs> C size batteries. It looks like it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten C batteries. So you could watch TV in the woods or whatever back then with this. And nowadays, the tuner in this is basically useless. You'd need to use a converter box or VCR or whatever with uh, this little thing. But it's cute, and it makes a decent video monitor. Because it does take composite video and audio, as you can see. I have a little Y adapter on it there. And I had to adjust those settings there a little bit. It's from 2001, so it's fairly old. has headphones and it has an external antenna jack and it uses a, uh, a wall wart. But it's a cute little TV. It's it's not really that great for watching stuff on because it's so small. Like, this is my hand. My hand is like the size of the whole damn thing. So, it, it's very small. It makes a good video monitor though. Let's say you wanted to use it for like a, an old security camera to mess around with it. It's perfect for something like that. Or you need to use it to test a piece of equipment or just to monitor the equipment as you're using it to transfer it to somewhere else or whatever. It's fine for that. Totally fine for that. And I just use it in the AV mode all the time for something like that. Uh, I've used What I've used this for is to test equipment that converts um, like HDMI down to composite or HDMI down to uh, RF even something like that and it's it, it was good enough to test for that although I'm hoping I can use the RCA set once that's all fixed up for that instead because this is tiny as far as what TV I'm using in the bedroom goes now I've gone back to using this symphonic TV that was new old stock and uh, this thing's been working out great uh, I watch TV on this thing just about every night before I go to bed and uh, it's performed flawlessly and that travel channel video that you saw on Plex on the um, on the Trinitron also looks good on this set as well. This set is really good for 4x3 content. But I'll watch 16x9 on here. I don't mind the letterboxing. Uh, it, it, it's a bedroom TV. Who cares? If I really want to watch something high quality, I'll go out to the living room and watch the 4K set. So, you know, it's great for that. The sound is good on this, and it's been a really rock-solid, reliable TV. So... Tell, tell that to anyone else that has a Funai set. If you get them new old stock and they're not abused, they're fine. So, there you go. The other thing I got a hold of are video equipment. Uh, there's not a whole lot of audio in this video, now that I look at it. I think I said in the beginning it was audio-video hobby, but it's mostly been video. <laughs> got two pieces of equipment here. This is an Xtron scaler box. And what this does is that it will scale an image from an input to an output. And it supports many different resolutions. But if you look at the back of this thing, it's serious business. It even has serious outputs. It has an RS-232 port. It's got a lot of audio inputs. Output with a VGA connector. It has DVI-D on it. RGB using a 15-pin VGA connector. BNC, S-Video, it's got all of it. This is component video right here, actually. So, this scaler box is such an intense piece of equipment that it really deserves a video of its own, and I really haven't educated myself enough on it yet to really do that. But that is a really cool piece of equipment. And here's one that I'm going to be using for TV repair. It is a blonder tongue. the hell? Somebody was just at my door. Did you see that? Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Some guys tried to open my door. I heard some Spanish and they left. <laughs> don't know what happened there. Anyhow, yeah, 
video equipment. Maybe they want this blonder tongue. I don't know. It's a a uh, modulator. And what this can do is allow me to inject a video signal directly into the IF of a TV because it has an IF loop in it that you connect with uh, with one of these babies. So you'd normally do it like that. You have an IF loop. But what I can do is I can connect that directly to the inside of a TV. That RCA TV I showed earlier in particular, that would be useful for. So you can bypass the tuner of an old TV to see how good the signal is. It would be really good for that. So that's a really cool piece of equipment. Again, I'm not, I'm just getting it sort of into vintage TVs, so I'm really not that educated and ready to uh, do like a full explanation of how these things work, but useful equipment, I will tell you what. Well, there you go. That was an update on sort of the AV stuff I've been getting into the last couple months. And uh, it's been a fun hobby to get back into. I I wasn't really cra I was crazy about AV things when I was a kid, and it's nice to sort of get back to that and mess around with it. I do have some computer stuff coming down the pike. I've got a bunch of vintage laptops I need to look at once I get the power adapters for them uh, found and everything. Um, my editing my editing rig and main computer have changed. My gaming computer has changed. Uh, the computer next to the uh, 4K set here has changed, as you can see. The uh, transfer PC has also changed. Different cases, different uh, guts inside and everything. So we have a lot to go over uh, later on. But uh, this has sort of just been the Christmas update. Uh, I've been knee-deep in hobbies, and I haven't really posted a lot of YouTube videos. Just because uh, these projects... When, when you get into AV projects, they don't always go smoothly enough that you can just make a video about them every week. Um, the computer projects tend to, but the AV projects can take a while. I don't know how Shango does it. Like, he'll just have a stock of stuff every week that he can just make a video of. And maybe I'll get to that point. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, there is stuff to come in the future uh, once I get around to it. Uh, so we will take a look at... Uh, probably the computer stuff next, but I wanted to bring you guys up to speed on the TV hobby and the video hobby. Uh, there, is a few, there are a few things to go over audio-wise. My, stere my stereo setup is a little different now um, and everything. But yeah, I thought I'd bring you guys up to speed. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this video, and you have a merry, merry Christmas. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.